short, very short presentation. Alexandra Dimitru, thank you so much for organizing most of today's event. She's our project uh, manager, uh, Venture Connects that is. And also Peter Barta from the uh, Fundacja Post Privatizare. Dragos Roa, a serial entrepreneur who did a wonderful job on Friday with the training session. Orlando Nicora, likewise one of, one of Romania's most well-known online uh, entrepreneurs. Radu Georgescu, also very uh, well-known in this uh, area, as uh, is Marius uh, Gena. Uh, myself, Dan, we show you from the uh, law firm Vidish Koran. And unfortunately, or I should say fortunately, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Ana Maria Andronic, she's in the U.S. at the moment, since she's being uh, sworn into the New York uh, State Bar. Uh, although she will have a short televised uh, or video she statement. She will have a short soon. five minutes session with you guys. Uh, just to wish everyone uh, good luck with your presentations. And uh, again, the third event, this time we had over I believe, 36. Uh, applications and we found or we selected 14 very good projects uh, for the investors who are attending. I encourage you to uh, especially uh, attend during the second part of the event when you will have uh, the uh, chance to directly discuss uh, the projects which will be pitched. And uh, again, very, very good uh, quality projects. I, I commend everyone and I know most of you are a bit nervous at the moment, but You've done a wonderful job up, up until now, so uh, just a, just another two or three more hours and then everything uh, will be fine. And once again, uh, congratulations to everyone. So without further ado, Alexandra. You, you could have done that. Um, anyway, um, this morning we have a special guest. Uh, at our third edition of Venture Connect. And uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Bill Poli. He's here uh, third or fourth time in Romania? Third time? Oh, it's so long then uh, that you come. Uh, and um, I, I work with, uh, with Bill on a program that we are running at uh, FPP, and which is called the Business Mentoring Program. And I'm glad to have, uh, have him as a special guest at uh, our event because he can uh, translate from his experience that he had in the past and his experience as Managing Director of the Entrepreneurship Center at MIT and as Professor at MIT on Entrepreneurship. So, Bill, please give us the opening session and your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Do I, do I need this? Can I? Oh, I think, yeah. I need it. Okay. Because I'm generally pretty loud otherwise. I'm from New York originally. So, but uh, hi, my name is Bill Lund. It's a pleasure to welcome you here. Um, it's great to see a room full of entrepreneurs and people who want to support entrepreneurs. Um, I'll just make a few quick comments and then let you get to the core of your business. But, uh, uh, you are involved in something that's incredibly important right now, incredibly uh, exciting. Uh, the world faces dramatic challenges, and I don't see them laid out clearly at times in the press or elsewhere, but people are starting to realize it. Uh, the population of the world continues to expand. If you look at a place like Saudi Arabia, for instance, their population continues to expand. They have 59% uh, of the population that's under the age of 24, under the age of 24. And um, these people are coming of age where they want to go into the workforce. And uh, unemployment there for Saudis is around 40%. It's hard to tell what the number is. And so this big boom of people is going to come into the market and they're going to want jobs. And the question is, where are the jobs going to be created? And first of all, they're not going to be created in governments. Governments are having a very hard time staying afloat. I'd say this if they're getting smaller, as you see in Greece, in Spain, and in Ireland. Um, and that will continue. They're actually not being created in large companies either. Um, a study in the United States showed that between 1980 and 2005, that 40 million net new jobs were created. Um, of those 40 net, net, 
40 million net new jobs. That means for if, if a company created one, but they you know, got rid of somebody else, that's a zero. So net new jobs, all 40 million, 100% of those 40 million net new jobs were created in companies that were five years old or less. So the new job creation is being done by new companies. That's where the jobs are coming from. So the world needs entrepreneurship. And, um, and not only do we need entrepreneurship for job creation, but we're, we're, we're facing some enormous challenges. Um, you're, you're probably well aware of the environment, environmental challenge, the energy challenge. Um, this is a huge challenge. And people say, well, we'll fix it with wind, we'll fix it with solar. Uh, no, we will not fix it just with that. We need to do a whole lot more because, again, if you just look at the numbers, I'm from MIT, we look at numbers, the population of the Earth continues to grow and we don't have enough resources. So we continue to put CO2 in the environment. The solution to that problem is not just solar, it's not just, the solution to that problem is entrepreneurs. It's going to take 100,000 entrepreneurs working 100,000 different garages around the world to come up with a solution to that. So um, this is why it is so important. And at the MIT Entrepreneurship Center, this is what we focus on, entrepreneurship. So I'm a little biased, but I could be a little biased, but we had people coming from around the world to come see us to talk about how to improve entrepreneurship. We have Obama, we have Russia, we have Middle East, we have every place coming to us. And uh, all of a sudden we feel wanted, it's nice. Um, and when the president of MIT goes out and talks about it, we, we have been very fortunate to be successful in it. Uh, we can learn a lot. There's a lot of other places that we can learn from. We look at, you know, um, we look at Silicon Valley. Israel is a very interesting place. What's going on right there? We're going on right now there. But um, th there are a few key things that you need to be successful in entrepreneurship. Um, one is you need to have a culture that supports entrepreneurship. And Romania has a good culture. You, you might not feel that, but you're a very scrappy group of people who get things done and don't make excuses. I say there are two types of people in the world. I say there are people who make excuses and they're entrepreneurs. I don't know how that translates. But, uh, but, but, Romanian, but Romanians don't make excuses. They just go and get it done. And it's great to see that. Uh, but once you have that culture and people want to start to get it done, then you have to start building skills as well. Um, and this is the program that Peter talked about. This is what you're doing in this program as well. Um, and so then the, you want, they're willing, but now are they able? And once they're able, you have to start to get resources. You have to start connecting with other people who have resources. And this is where it is so important to work with not only your customers, but people who can offer you additional resources. And those are the people who have the red on today. Why do they have red on? Why isn't it green? It should be green, shouldn't it, Peter? <laughs> but uh, this is where the, 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 the investors will come in for the entrepreneurs. And this is where they'll offer you additional resources. Um, there's, you know, we look at it, there's two types of entrepreneurship as well. There's small, medium enterprises, companies that are looking to address regional markets, and then there are then what we call innovation-based entrepreneurship, and these are people who do something that's so good that it will address global markets. And we focus very much on the ones on the right-hand side, and that, that, those type of companies generate a lot more jobs and they generate a lot more growth. On the other hand, those are the companies that need more resources to grow. So how do you do that? You have events like this. In, in, uh, at MIT, we do this in many different ways. In my center right now, we have 20 different companies that are starting and we're setting up a demo day for them, very similar to this, um, at the end of the summer. Uh, we also have mass challenge in the United States. But what we're always trying to do is foster skill development, then followed up by connections with other people these collisions, as we call it, with other, um, other people who have resources, be they customers, be they investors, or like. And it works. It works. If you look at what's going on at MIT, if I can just for one second, um, there's over 25,000 companies today that exist. MIT's not that big. It's less than a square mile. 
and there's over 25,000 companies that exist today. Each year we're starting, MIT alumni start almost 1,000 companies a year. Um, and, and the population isn't that big of MIT. Um, and, but if you take all the companies that exist today, the revenue that's generated by people from MIT is almost $2 trillion. Uh, which, just to put that in GDP perspective, that would make it the 11th biggest economy in the world. And we don't have oil <laughs> in Cambridge. All we have is a bunch of hardworking, smart, pe smart people. Um, but so does a lot of other places. So does Harvard, so does Caltech, so does Carnegie Mellon. Um, but what makes it special is the ecosystem that helps produce them, make them successful. And this is what this group is, is working so hard to reproduce now, and I think doing a, doing a very good job. But be patient, it takes a while. Um, and we'll help you with the connections as you go through it. Um, there's two Romanian entrepreneurs, actually three Romanian entrepreneurs, They've been working in this program that Peter and I have been working on, um, Flavio and Ioana, and uh, they've been working very hard. They showed me what they were doing over here. We've been able to make connections with them in the United States, and they have many new opportunities now. So if I leave you with anything, you're on the right path. Don't just look inside of Romania. You can do a lot of good work. The market, the big, much bigger market will exist for you outside of Romania. And then partner with people to help get the resources. And when I say partner, I mean partner. Find someone that you can work with who will add value. It's not just the money. Uh, believe it or not, once you start to succeed, there's lots of places where you can get money. You need to get someone who you can work with who will produce value. So with that, should I turn it over, Peter? Or is there questions? Any questions? Please. No questions. One, one comment, Bill. Yes, uh, please. Just to, to pinpoint the fact that this event is gradually becoming a regional event. We, uh, this uh, third edition, we already have the pitches coming from Bulgaria, Czech Republic, so. Brilliant. Uh, which, is, which is a great thing, but because you mentioned the ecosystem, and I think it's, it's, it's more of a, of a larger regional problem than just a Romanian problem that we still don't have enough, let's say, the same angel seed funds and, and, and venture capital uh, to, to, to fuel the, the kind of you know, innovation-based uh, entrepreneurial projects that, that, that emerge from, from these countries, yes. so, uh, Romania and, and, uh, and, and the region. Yeah, I think, I think if you just think of yourselves as Romania against Bulgaria and Czech Czechoslovakia, that's not the way to think about this. This isn't like the Olympics. You're all in this together, and if you can share your resources, you'll do uh, you'll do a lot, lot better. Eric Kish is now in the United States doing some studying over there, Romanian, and uh, he's done extremely well bridging it. He's not got a new idea that he's going around selling the United States. Yeah, I think a lot of the people in the room would, would know Eric from Smart Dream. Yes, do you know Eric? Yeah. He's now in the United States and called help helped this new idea with law firms in the United States. We've got a lot, a lot of lawyers in the, in the U.S. too, unfortunately. <laughs> so anyway, before we go, great progress. I'm so proud to see this book out there. Great job, Marius. It's good to see it. Good to see you published. Thank you, Bill. And um, uh, just a quick note on the fact that there is there is um, there are some 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 words written by you. They're translated in in Romanian, I think, in the in the, mm -hmm. in the first pages of the book. Thank you very much for for this. Uh, for this reference for the book. No, my pleasure. We love to promote entrepreneurship. As we say, world peace through entrepreneurship. <laughs> we don't have any other alternatives. <laughs> they okay. Flower power. Flower power. Yeah, we're actually going to do a festival at uh, MIT, believe it or not. This is a political statement, and uh, it's going to be, I call it the Woodstock. How many of you remember Woodstock? Any of you? Most of my students have no idea what I'm talking about when I say Woodstock. Yeah. But all I was born when I was thank you for that. Was nice. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look that old either, I'm going to tell you. Uh, but uh, it's, called, it's called the T equals zero festival, and the t-shirts say peace, love, and entrepreneurship. And the students love it, but they just think of it as Burning Man. You know Burning Man? It means South by Southwest. Uh, so they have no clue. But um, you, have to, you, have to, you have to feel very proud about what you're doing with entrepreneurship. Um, and you have to do it as a team. It is not an individual sport. Entrepreneurship is a team sport. So thank you very much.